it all the way back. Auburn's going to win the football game. Fire to the end zone. Touchdown! Alabama wins! Auburn wins the BCS National Championship. Live on a Monday. This is this is under review at its peak, it's right here. All right, all right. Another week is in the books. It's week zero, but now we're going into week one. It means the comeback of under review. Cole, Steven, and Tyler. Guys, how are we doing? I'm doing great, Cole. Good, man. Glad to be back. Glad to be back. Hashtag the return. Back by popular demand. We couldn't go another <laughs> football season without each other. We all had to do it the COVID year last year. Yep. But we're back. We, we're going we had, strong. We had COVID a year early. So that's yeah, what happened. Yeah, we uh, had COVID a year early. We had COVID early. a year early, and then we had COVID last year. <laughs> right. And then now we're, we're COVID free. We're COVID free. We're, we're ready. We're, vaxxed. we're ready. We are ready for a <laughs> strong football season. I cannot wait. This week one is probably one of the most anticipated college football opening weekends I've ever seen. There's so many good matchups, a lot of ranked matchups. We've got a lot of content. We've got Steven Stat of the Day coming to you later on in the show. Uh, we got Tyler's betting pit picks for the week. Tyler's got, takes. Tyler's oh, takes. Tyler's, Tyler's takes name. for his Tyler's betting takes. picks. Tyler's takes. We've got the got the team that's in my doghouse is coming up later in the show. So we've got a lot of stuff we want to come to you Uh Make sure you like and subscribe to us on our Spotify, our Apple, uh, you know, our iTunes podcast, whatever the case may be. Go on our Facebook because we'll Facebook. be live on Facebook. We'll be live on YouTube. So go on our Facebook and our YouTube. We're under review 24-7. I think we're just under review on Facebook. Absolutely. Under review 24-7 on Instagram. Under review 24-7 on Twitter. Under review 24-7 on YouTube. You can find us anywhere and everywhere. You get your podcast or your live stream. Steven had that social media little banter. Just, he, had that, he had that quoted ready Steven to go. Steven is just so prepared that he made the social medias right before we did this. So, like, I, I just, you know, had him on the brain. I'm fired up. I can't wait. I need wait. to stop looking at you because I keep I, looking at you, but you're right there. I, I mean, why I'm, am I looking I'm, that way? Because you're right there. I'm fired up, dude. <laughs> I, I love it. I, I can't wait. So, I can't see what can't wait to see what you guys have in mind for our teams, for, for the teams here locally, for the NFL coming up here in a couple of weeks. But we'll start with what we saw from week zero. So, let's get right into it. Uh, and we'll start with a team that a lot of people have had some expectations here for about three or four seasons and things are still the the train is still not getting going and that's the nebraska cornhuskers oh. as they fall to the illinois illini 30 to 22 brett bielma's first game as the illini's head coach guys what was our thoughts for this game so i for, so we'll go if, i have a nebraska's bad stats right now uh Two of them are just going to be graphics that popped up in the game because they just make Scott Frost look terrible. Absolutely. He is uh, so far. But Nebraska, this is the first time they've lost consecutive season openers since 1977 and 1978. So this is very bad for Nebraska for a long time. Not good. And this is the first time Illinois has beaten Nebraska in back-to-back seasons, which granted they were not in the Big Ten for a while, but still. Right, Since 1923 and 1924. So this is almost 100 years since Illinois has beaten them in back-to-back seasons. This is bad. And I don't know how much of the game you watched. I only got to end up watching the first uh, half, which right. was just gross. The yeah. first half was just bad football. It was, I mean, was it not was, entertaining It was at football, all. so I loved it. And it was week zero, and it's the first game, so I loved it. Wanted to watch every second of it. I only got to watch the first half. It was gross. It was bad. Uh, Brett Bielema ran the same offense that he's been doing it's in, when we saw that him in bully ball offense we, where he just runs the ball like almost every down as I say, it feels when, like. when we saw him at Wisconsin, we saw him at Arkansas. It's right. the same offense he's been running. Absolutely. And obviously, Illinois had their quarterback go down. I, I think it was on the first series. Brandon Peters, yeah. yeah. He went down with a shoulder uh, so injury. So yeah. that obviously changed, I think, their game plan up a little bit. Yeah. But what? So let me ask you this, Cole. Let me lead into this. What are they doing still starting Adrian Martinez? Like, if you look <laughs> well, at. Well, first of all, is he not. It, it, I, I'm. I may be wrong on this. Is he related to the Martinez that started for Nebraska a few think years so. back? I, don't, I mean, Taylor I don't Martinez. It's, it's very so. ironic to me that both both these quarterbacks that have played for these two teams, I mean, not two teams, this team, uh, on two separate occurrences, they both have the last name Martinez. I'm like, this thing, this feels like the same plot for this Nebraska team. But uh, to answer your question, I I don't know. He he really is the only playmaker that they have for Nebraska. Right. If you really watch it, here's a stat for you, Steve. Okay. Ready? Nebraska running backs averaged 2.3 yards a carry as a total, on average. Adrian Martinez, 6.5 rushing yards. So he had almost double 
right. the running backs that they have. So they have no playmakers at running back. It seemed like he was running for his life every play. And since Scott Frost has taken over this team, they have just looked like they, they look. The, he's been out coaching almost every game that he yeah. that he coaches in. Yeah. And he's twelve and well, I think he's twelve and twenty one now uh, he's, for his his record with Nebraska. He's got now. twelve wins in three seasons. Twelve wins in three 12 seasons. Twelve wins. He has won three games in the Big Ten each year. That's three. Not, it, that's pathetic. His that, point difference. Listen to this because this is one of the graphics they pulled up during the game, right? So just for in conference play, right? So 2018, his point differential in Big Ten games was 41. Mm. His yards per game, his yards per game actually aren't. I that's mean, they're not, not good. great, but they're not good. That's 453, not good. 14 turnovers, at least 14 turnovers in conference play in each of his th- three seasons, and then wow. only three wins. And then last season, it was a 51 point differential, and they only averaged 392 yards per game. Ugh. That's just. I mean, those are just. Those are gross numbers. Those are bad. Those are like yeah. Rutgers. This in the is big a game. prideful like, program too. This, Nebraska is a team that wants to get back to that relevancy, and this is going in, in the complete opposite right, direction with a right. game like this. Where I don't know if you guys saw this play. This was the telling play of how poorly coached they look. Uh-huh. First and goal. Now I think the coaching staff might have thought this was still fourth and inches or third and inches, or whatever it was. So the top first and situation. goal, and you QB sneak it from the ten yard line. Where is your communication from your coaching staff that you are doing that? Where is where is that? At the, it goes from the top. Scott Frost. It starts at the top and then trickles down to your players from your coaching staff. This is and, and then Scott Frost has a game. I love what he. I, I just think it's hilarious. He says he's uh, he doesn't want to do the same movie is what he says from the last few seasons. Well, Scott Frost, this looks like a bad sequel, my friend. I'm sorry, but this looks like the same film that we've seen for this Nebraska team. And you're not looking better. They they were so fired up about this hire when you hired Scott Frost. And I'm sorry, this is not Central Florida anymore. This is not the the uh, uh, just a, a group of five conference. This is the Big Ten you're playing in now. And you're not gonna be able to cut corners and be able to coach yourself out of a little box like Scott Frost has been doing the last few years. You're gonna right. have to get out there and start winning football games because Husker fans are hungry. So I'll they're go, ready to start winning. So I'll go two more points for you and then we can move on because we're gonna talk about Nebraska. We can talk about how number oh, yeah, Nebraska oh, yeah. is for uh, this yes, whole show. Yes. I'm fine with that, but we'll move on after this. So I got two more things. They put up the graphic of his winning percentage and the worst winning percentage of Nebraska head coaches. Oh my! And goodness. the other two, I like the this. picture, is hilarious because the other two are in black and white. They're, they're from so long ago. I mean, one's, just, yeah. one's from 1949 to 55. The other is 1957 to 61. He's in between. Are these He's guys in, even living anymore? I mean, <laughs> I mean no. maybe not. Honestly, maybe not. Uh, maybe yeah, not. Seriously. But I mean, he has a three three seventy five winning percentage. And that's just not good. And Jeez, man. it's almost like oh. he's trying to turn Nebraska into the 90s when they wa- ran read options, and that's just not college football offense anymore. You don't read, you don't run read options unless you're like, which Georgia Tech doesn't even do it anymore. So I can't even say Georgia Tech. <laughs> Before we move on, Tyler, since you're the, you're the betting man of this group, over under wins that Scott Frost has to get this season in order for them to not put him on the hot seat. How many wins does he have to get this year? Oh, well, so, I, I, go ahead. I was just going to say for the hot seat question because I, I, I do want you to answer this because I am interested in what you have. Yeah. But he I mean, he's a $20 million buyout. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not saying that he's going to get fired this year. I'm saying, though, like next year, like, like for him not to be put on the hot seat for next season, how many wins does he have to get this year? You know, any team at the beginning of the season can come back and recover. Uh but I would probably say realistically eight wins. You think eight wins? Oh, I you think, think eight I, wins? Ah oh, man. So let's let's look at their uh, yeah. let's look at just, their just, schedule. Just really run through quick. their schedule quick, they Steven. Have Fordham next week. Okay, so that's a that's a dub. we can give that you Buffalo. Get a dub. We can give Buffalo a dub. Then they play at Oklahoma. Mm. Then they play at that's Mis- an L. Uh, <laughs> I almost said Mississippi State at Michigan State <laughs> <laughs> versus Northwestern versus <sighs> Michigan. At Minnesota versus Purdue, I don't even want to give them the Purdue win. No, I don't I, think they're going to beat Northwestern. I, I like maybe Michigan. I like State, where your I like there. your optimism for eight wins, Tyler. But I mean, I think they're going to struggle to get five or six wins this year. I do. Honestly, I, 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 don't, I, don't I don't know where I see five like, or six wins. I don't think Illinois. Like Illinois, just getting to a bowl game might be. I guess. What What did they go last year? Did they Did they, did they no, win? They, they have not made a bowl game in his. That's what I thought. I, no. I didn't think so. So at least maybe let's just lower. Maybe get to a bowl game. Get over five wins and get that six so, win and so get to a bowl. Well, that's that's what? what I'm saying. Like, I think it's already. I think Husker fans would be great if they got eight wins. Oh, no, gosh. absolutely. But I, I, I think that you should just consider yourself grateful if they get six because this team does not look like they're going to go anywhere anytime soon. Absolutely. Not. I mean, so. I think it's in you know inevitable that he's going to be in the hot seat and probably fired potentially absolutely. next year. They're not going to have a twenty million dollar buyout. No, that's, they don't. Well, they insane. don't have the boosters. They don't have right. the boosters that like Texas has that they're just going to throw out twenty million dollars, right? Exactly. So he's stuck there another year, whether they like it or not. Yeah, Let's go ahead and move on. 
Uh, Tyler's crazy for saying Speaking eight wins. Speaking of guys on the hot seat. Uh, we can move on to Hawaii at UCLA. Uh, so UCLA kind of blew them out. Oh, uh, yeah. Which we, I think everybody and, expected and I, a little bit. I think bit. Chip Kelly really needed that. I, I think, think so, too. I think he needed but that But it, it shades of Oregon Chip Kelly coming back, maybe? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I think that offense looked really good. I, I mean, I think they looked I really like good, Dor- too. Dorian they're, Thompson Robinson, I like that kid. I, I like his I was going to say, their running game was good. It they, looks they good. They actually had a good running game. Um, so... Kind of moving on from that game, just could be Shays of Oregon, Chip Kelly coming back. But let's move on to the next week, or this Saturday coming up, actually. They have LSU coming at home, and they're I, only three-point dogs to number 16 right. LSU. What do, you, what do you see coming from that game, Cole? Well, I, I think it's going to be tough because I don't really know what we're going to get from LSU. Uh, th- th- this is a team that, I mean, I can see LSU winning nine or ten games, but then I can also see LSU winning seven or eight games. I, you just We don't know what we're going to get from that team just quite yet. Um, and I don't think Ed Orgeron knows either. Uh, I, I think Chip Kelly is going to benefit really good from the fact that he had a, he had a week for his team to kind of get a little tune-up game against Hawaii. Uh, and it, it was big for Chip Kelly to get this because I did not know this. He was 0-4 against group of five teams coming into Saturday. Oh, my against, gosh. Against Hawaii. I didn't know that either. They had not won a game against a group of five teams. I did not know that. That's it was crazy. actually his first non-conference win at UCLA. He's actually lost <laughs> every non-conference game that he's played, <laughs> which is crazy to me. I, I, I saw that. I was like, this can't be right. Well, I knew he was really bad. This can't be right. So, so he, I, bad I looked it up, too, him. after we, when I put this as a talking point, I looked it up, like just Chip Kelly's record overall, and it's – it's not good. Not good. It's not good. Because so everybody is like, oh my gosh, are we going to ever see him come back to the Oregon stages? Or, or right. you know, He left for the NFL. Right. At least he was decent then. It's just, it's been, Absolutely. been bad. No, UCLA needed that win on Saturday. And I think this has gave them kind of a formula of what this team's makeup is. And then definitely running that run style of offense where it spreads you out, run yeah. between the tackles, zone run, rushing game as far as with Dorian Thompson Robinson being the spread option quarterback he is. I think that's what you got to do for LSU. Just do what you do best yeah. and just see. Because I. I just don't know what we're going to get from LSU now that they're completely having to change their offensive system still here. Because uh, who's who's their offensive coordinator now? Because they lost, of course, Joe Brady. Oh, for, but that was, was that you, two years ago or just a year ago? That, two years ago. It's two years ago. So he didn't have him last year. Yeah, he was, he was, and uh, you saw how bad that offense he was He was offensive last year. coordinator was, for uh, the Panthers last year. Right. Okay, so yeah. So, so it, it's been two years since he's been gone. Yeah, so it's, this is year two of them trying to tool an offense big, without the help of Brady. I think that's going to be – Big, big, big hot seat game. Because if LSU loses this game – Ed yeah, Orgeron's, what, what Ed Orgeron's we, hot, and if Chip now, Kelly loses, I don't think it's as much of a yeah, hot seat for Chip let's Kelly. Let's pump but, the brakes, Steve. Let's not let's not fire. He just won a national championship for you two years ago. Let's I'm, not try and Gene Chizik him and get rid of him. <laughs> I mean, just one year out. Let's not. I, let's it's, pump it's the brakes things, a little. We bit. talked about this uh, back when we were last on the show, right, Colt? Fans just don't look at it. Oh, that, oh we're, we're a, what right? have you done for me lately, society? Exactly. Now, we want we want to fire the coach saying, as soon as they get in the door. I don't think now, you should fire course. him. He's had good recruiting and everything. I'm just saying that this right. is going to be his hot, seat's going to get warm. Is all I'm saying. Yeah. If he warm goes seven. what seven and five? No, six if he and loses six? UCLA, game, just saying, oh, just if he loses the UCLA, you do, uh, I'm saying fans. I'm not saying he needs to be fired. I don't think he should be fired. I'm saying wow. fans will. Get you think the LSU fans would call for Ed Orgeron if they call lost, for it? I'm not saying it's that strong. I said warm, warm. We're just heating up. We're heating What's the up. line for Saturday, Tyler? Uh, it's uh, LSU is uh, three point favorite. It's three point favorite. Sorry, okay. oh, yeah, Tyler. <laughs> no, I, just to add on that, I would say, isn't it funny how the dynamic has changed? You know, we had less miles a couple of years ago. Fans oh, were not happy with nine wins a year. Oh, dude, but yeah, look, no. Ever since Orgeron won the national championship, I feel like he can settle in, you know, winning, I would say, eight, seven, eight, or nine I games. I definitely think that you have to win at least eight games. I think you have to win. For so. fans to be help, like happy about it, I think that yeah. at well, least just, eight wins. Well, the amount of talent they have, too, it's not – it's 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 less so of a – the, you know, I don't have the talent, or I don't have my guys. The problem at this point, is, is the is the division that LSU is in because they yeah. have A and M and Alabama in the division. So you 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 might have two losses already coming to you. So to your point, Stephen, about losing to UCLA, that could point that you're already going to get maybe three losses That's what I said. for the year. I, I, now I'm not saying they're and they have to play Florida. Just heating up, heating up. Uh, I got so you. For let's go win total. We're just going to go win total for you every time, Tyler. What's LSU's win total? Let's set it. Let's set the over under here. People of their schedule. Uh, I can. It's I, I if, I'm, have it if I'm not mistaken. Well, no, I'm just I'm oh, scoring okay, off the top of my head. I think they play against UCLA. I believe they have the cupcake game the next week, and then I think a lot of the conference teams, the SEC teams, start 
early this year as far as week week uh, three. I know what that team I think is. that uh, <laughs> Mc, McNeese oh, yeah, okay. State. So it's, yeah. so it's UCLA. I could, MCN, yeah. I didn't know what that was. So they have UCLA, McNeese State, Central Michigan. Then they have at Mississippi State, at Auburn at home, at Kentucky, Florida at home, at Ole Miss, at Alabama, Arkansas at home, Louisiana Monroe at home, uh, oh, and Texas a and at home. I mean, so, so you've, so you've, got, most you've got a lot of your The only game that you have that's that's not at home that's tough game is Alabama. The rest you're playing at home. I mean, Tyler, I don't know about you, man, but I, I mean, I think well, I think over under seven and a half is pretty I good. Say, yeah, I would have put. And I, I think eight's it, doable. I'll take the eight. over. I would put. I would eight. take the over. I would or I actually I'll put it eight. One game they can eight lose eight and a half, maybe get to nine. I think, yeah. I, cause I think they beat Florida. I think they beat Florida. So you're saying the only would, three games you think LSU loses this year is Texas A&M, Alabama, and then one other. I would honestly I don't even say know if they lose three. They might just lose Alabama and Texas A&M. Do they have Arkansas at home? They do. They do. Okay. They do. They have Arkansas, Louisiana, Monroe. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're at Ole Miss. That's that could be a sneaky a game, tricky they're just, game. Yeah. because yeah. they're just coming game. off that Florida game too. That's true. You have Florida at home and you have to travel to Ole That's Miss. True. That could be a tricky game. Yeah, I, I'll set it at eight and a half. And I yeah. would probably take the over. I think <laughs> I, 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 I like, I like eight wins. I think, I think eight wins is good for LSU. All right, let's move on because again, well, before just, you move on, real ahead. quick, I was going to say Dorian Thompson Robinson started the year at plus five thousand odds to win the Heisman. Yeah. Really, plus six thousand odds. What do you uh, do? To? <laughs> well, do a I, win for so LSU do, would definitely you, put him. Uh, if you beat LSU on Saturday, and, and, and of course. A, hell, a hefty dose of Dorian Thompson is going to be required for that. Yeah. So if he has a good day against LSU and they beat them, hey, I could see his name getting tossed around yeah. for that. He, well, he dropped down a little bit after going 10 for 20 for 130 yards. Yeah, his, yeah. his numbers weren't great. Touchdowns. His numbers okay, so weren't so great against yeah, I was confused he, I, if he moved up definitely or Definitely should have had probably a little bit more of a stat padding day against yeah. a, a Hawaii squad that probably was not good. And so. then also to answer your question, uh, Jake Peets came over from the Carolina Panthers, Panthers as a – Offense coordinator. Well, we're going to okay, see what he go. can do here. There we go. Here we go. fact check. What is fact check, Tyler? We'll, we'll, we'll need you, that Tyler. throughout. Thank we'll you. Need that. The, 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 the man behind the producer. The man behind the producer. My goodness. For the producer. Could, couldn't ask for so a better So let's move one. on to the last game that we want to talk about just from week zero. There were some other games, but this game just interesting to me because, first of all, they blew out UConn. UConn's a terrible team anyways. Absolutely. But blew them out, and then it was 117 degrees on the field. Oh, I saw this. Wow. The players' cleats were melting. And a fan, they had to stop the game because uh, uh, at least one fan passed out. I don't know if there was more. So that game, the only thing I really want to talk about is, man, UCon- UConn may never win a game again. And then two, oh my gosh, it was 172 degrees outside. And yeah, they were playing no, the game. yeah, that was that was it. That was it. That was just. My I, I, I haven't paid much attention to UConn football, but I I, I can't say I've, I've seen them have a W next to them in the column as far as uh, seeing those Sports Center updates. I don't see so them like, winning many games. So like I think the last in the last three years, like no joke, I think they won three games the last three years. It's something. That's, it's something that's, crazy that's, like that. That's pretty it's, bad. It's very. I, I know bad. Rutgers went for a while there where they had a. Awful record it for is a few similar. years. It is similar. But I'm sure it's pretty similar to it, that it, one it, too. It, it, it had to be. Whew. But 117 degrees? Yes. My goodness, guys! That I can't even imagine going for a walk in 117 degrees. Well, you play so, a football. So game? the actual temperature outside was like I think it was like 90 or 95 degrees. It was like the field. The itself field temperature was 100. Like if you goodness. touched the field, it was 117 degrees. Which obviously that imagine means imagine being the referees and the guys that are like carrying the chains on the field. It's those rubber oh pellets. You know, oh my gosh! Those I rubber, can't imagine that. Like at least the players are like getting water. Water sprayed on. They yeah. have fans around. Those guys carrying the chains. My goodness, I bet they were miserable. And the media guys that was out there. Oh, oh! Imagine the part-time student guy working for the Student Journal, like out there taking pictures. Man, I don't get paid enough for this crap. 117 degrees? Are you kidding me? My goodness. Okay. Oh. <laughs> do we want to? Do we want to go ahead and preview? We can just go ahead and preview uh, Thursday's games real quick that are not. Well, obviously none of them play Thursday, but we'll just go ahead and preview Thursday's games right now as we're recording. UAB game is going on, so yes, we can kind UAB of and JSU, we can kind yes. of preview that game a little bit real quick. Just kind of, well, we can just talk, kind of talk about what our ex- expectations for UAB since they're already playing right now. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, this is Coach Clark playing against uh, coach against his alma mater, right? Um, and whatnot, and, and we're we're sitting here watching it live, and yeah, and, and gonna right be now, fair. right now, no, it's it's scoreless. Uh, but, but obviously, <laughs> you you guys at home will, will uh, have already oh, no. seen who the oh, winner is. No. But. Uh, <laughs> UAB's returning 17 Whoa! starters from last Sorry, year. Sorry, that was bad. great podcasting. Go ahead. <laughs> UAB's returning 17 <laughs> starters from last year, and JSU, of course, played four games in the fall and then nine this spring. And so trying to decide if that was an advantage or disadvantage for JSU. But, I mean, 
This team for UAB is coming off of a six and three record where they won the West Division and defeated Marshall in the Conference USA Championship right. game. And that's their second in three years, of course. Right. Um what do we what do we see from this team overall going to this? Can they I mean this would be unprecedented, guys. I mean, can you imagine three out of four years UAB winning the conference title? I mean that that doesn't even seem like if, if you told me this five or six years ago when I was a, a, a student at UAB, I'd be like, "You're crazy." Yeah, I three mean, out of four years we're gonna win the conference championship. That that is that's insane. Well, so we were students too when the, like the whole football program shut down too. Exactly. So, I mean, we, so we, we, we really didn't think <laughs> that this would come to fruition. So that just speaks to the job that Coach Clark has done. Yeah, and they just showed his winning percentage. I think it's like six forty five, which is like. I mean, it doesn't sound that great just on paper, but that's insane for UAB. Like, it was nothing. So, just to kind of go on the the, what we think UAB will do this year. So, they've got everyone returning on the offensive line. That was already really good, especially at run blocking. Yes. They should be better at pass blocking this year a little bit. So, I think – so, right now they have – my question kind of leading up to this was going to be, will Lucero start or will Tyler Johnson start? They have Tyler Johnson starting at quarterback. I figured that because he's a little bit Absolutely, less. Absolutely, yeah. a little bit less turnover prone. More, more experience. Yeah, he's, he's more experienced. More experience. He's starting more games, and like I said, just he he doesn't. I guess he's not as electric. Absolutely. as Brandon Lucero. Yeah. But oh he's, yeah. But he's less turnover prone. You know, it's kind of the it's kind of the go with the Tyler season. Johnson. He's not lose you games. Yes. You know, <laughs> Tyler say, Johnson's the guy that packs his lunch to work and comes to work every day, just shows up and does his little nine to five work and then goes home. He's correct. nothing special. He's not gonna. <laughs> He's not going to win you games, but he's not going to lose you Correct. games. Exactly. That's yeah. his thing. It's it's not that it, it, his skills just blow you off the off the paper, but I mean he's thirteen and five as a starter. Right. I mean, so I mean you can't really like point your finger and say, oh man, Tyler Johnson. He's not the reason they lose. He's games. not the reason they're no. losing. That's the thing. I mean, but, but, but he's he, also not. He's providing. also not the reason why that they're like reaching spectacular offensive levels. Is right. what I guess what we're trying to say. Right. So definitely, but definitely. I, well, I I guess I guess what I'm asking here, you is Stephen, is uh-huh. what where do you see them as far? as – do you see them repeating as West Division champs, getting the championship game, winning? What, where's your win total at? So I was talking about it, I guess, earlier this week. I mean, there's no reason that UAB shouldn't win 10 games this year. Uh, 10 games, so 10 and 2. I think there's like two. Uh, two they play, they're on the road at Georgia, so we'll go ahead and right, count right. that as a loss, yeah, right, I guys? We'll, I think we'll go ahead and count also, that as a loss. Just to add to that, yeah. their uh, uh, win total this year was over under 7. And I know. Seven and I thought really? So yeah. low. That's a so, man. There's a lot of value in that pick if you so take the over. So they My play goodness. Jacksonville State this week, obviously. They're playing right now. Yeah, that's and then a they dub. play at Georgia. Yeah. We can count that as a loss, right? So that's oh, 100%, one loss. 100%. At UNT, that's going to be a tough game, but they should win that. At Tulane, they should win, which at Tulane also might be in at Legion Field. By the way, because mm-hmm. Tulane, the whole thing going on yeah. right now with the hurricane. Absolutely. The Liberty game will be huge. They have yes. Liberty at home. That's yep. actually the first home game in their new stadium. So yep. obviously they want to come out with a win, but that that will be that will be the kind of turning point I think. Because if they can win those, they can win three out of their first four. Obviously Georgia loss, and then they, if they can come out and beat Liberty, I think you're looking at a ten win, eleven win season, right? Right there. I think so. Well, too. even then, even if you count, you know, Liberty and Georgia obviously as losses. They're still over seven and a half. Right, but you oh, play, well you play, over. So well you play at Marshall. That okay. would be the other. Oh, no, no, that I, that's what I was gonna say. I have them at right at nine wins. I have them going nine and three with losses to Georgia, Liberty, yeah, and Marshall. I think they'll lose at Marshall this okay. year. I yeah, think that's gonna have, be their they toughest have test. At home, so that'll be helpful. Uh, but yes, at Marshall, yeah, I think they can win Marshall those games. Probably be the one of the yeah, toughest. Yeah, that's and that. Then, I think Marshall's gonna be a really good team this year in the Conference USA. It's just, uh, like UAB, they won't, like they bring back so many players. I mean, obviously they lose Austin Watkins and uh, Myron Mitchell, um, potentially making NFL rosters. They lose, um, but that's really. I mean, they lose Spencer Brown, but they were already kind of doing running back. Oh yeah, yeah, they, they were already doing a committee. So committee you lose a couple field, wide so receivers, fine. but you keep Pittman, who's a great tight end. Uh, and then the, on defensive side, you lose Chris Mole, who's a leading tackler. He was right. such a great linebacker. But you're you still have Noah Wilder there, and then you're almost not replace Chris Mole, but you move talent onto the defensive line, adding uh, Justin Thomas, LSU transfer. Yeah, so he should be really, really good. And we know that's where Coach Clark prides himself is on the defensive line and and, and that defensive Ooh. front, that front seven is right, where he because really wants to attack. Speaking of why he favors that, Jordan Smith, the great defensive end last year, or I guess outside linebacker, moves on to the NFL. He actually made a roster. I think he was fourth-round draft pick, so awesome. really good there and everything like Congrats that. You return you return four out of five of your defensive backs. So you're returning most of your starters. Now, yep. you do lose some talent there, but if you're returning, especially the offensive line 
And that defense, who was, I think they were sixth in the nation. They finished sixth in the nation in scoring defense. Yeah, I think it was actually top five. Yeah, well, it might have been top five. It was, it was very high. Yeah. It was very high. Yeah, their defense was so, phenomenal last year. You return most of those starters. The D-line will be great, but that I think that's where your your biggest question mark is for the season. How Absolutely. does that D-line perform? Yep. Uh, and then I think the other thing you got to do on offense is just stop turning the ball over. Yep, I think they yep. shoot themselves in the foot. Way Obviously, Tyler Johnson is less prone, but he, he he's a fumbler. He throws interceptions. It's it's almost like he doesn't throw that many, but he just throws them at the most inopportune times. You know, like the it just kills just, the momentum. Of the it's drive. one of those where it's just Weird. like, yes. hey, you don't have to score, you don't have to kick the field goal, just don't turn it over, right. and then you turn Absolutely. it over. You know, it's like just just run out the clock and you turn it over, kind of thing. Yep. But I I mean, I'm with you on that one. So that, I, I yeah. say I say nine or ten wins though for yeah. sure. I think I, I, I'm at nine wins I for you. I think ten. I think they could they could definitely win ten. So right now they're sixteen and a half point favorite against uh, JSU right now, and it is a scoreless. It game. is scoreless with three minutes left in the first quarter. So hey, I mean, not not to not to go ahead and you know guarantee anything because nothing is guaranteed in football. Anything happened, and it's week one, so UAB is probably going to be dusting off some rust and whatnot. And like I said, JSU they did play in the spring, so this is a more polished. Yeah. I think so these they, players are—they just played a few months ago. Yeah, I think they so only had more polished. I think they only had 114 days off. Yeah, something so, I mean, like that. They're, they're still. For, Zarek Cooper is coming in here, and he's and he's got some some game in the last month. So I mean, not to go ahead and count that as a dub, but hey, there's some big. There's a big game going on tomorrow night or tonight. I'm sorry, tonight <laughs> against Ohio State and Minnesota. Yes. Ohio State obviously trying to bounce back after getting beat down. In January against <laughs> Alabama in the national, I mean, there, there's no other way to describe it. I mean, they just got absolutely waxed. In oh, it was, it, I think it was another one of those, uh, you know, 2019 LSU kind of type teams where yes, like Ohio yeah. State obviously beat Clemson in that big game. They they demolished. Yeah, they played Clemson. Yeah, they demolished Clemson. They did. Uh, but it was one of those where Alabama was just on a path. You know, they, like yeah, 2019 was, LSU was on a path, and you just weren't going to beat them no matter how good you were, and you walk in, and they kind of, I think I've heard Joe Burrow talk about, they walked into that, that Clemson game at the end when Clemson was so good, and they were just like, they, I mean, we walked in knowing we were going to win. We walked in every single oh, yeah. game they, they were knowing confident. we were going to win. I think that was the same kind of thing you got with Alabama in 2020. Yeah, they walked sure. in every single game saying, like, we're going to win this game. Like, we will win this game. So I think that's what kind of Ohio State just ran into that. I yeah. think they were a great team. They just ran into that. And then, obviously, they didn't play as many games. They weren't as polished uh, and other things like that. For sure. Uh, but, obviously, they lose a lot of talent in Justin Fields. Oh, Justin Fields is gone. So, C.J. Stroud. And he's gotten some love in the Heisman odds, which is – you know, I don't know how they determine these Heisman odds sometimes because I see C.J. Stroud's high up there. I see D.J. Ujulele. Is that how you pronounce his name? Ujulele? I think no. Uh, I for the is it? I don't know. I, I'm not I'm sure. not pronouncing but they it. Have a, and then they have Bryce <laughs> Young up there, too. I'm like, these guys have not even taken a meaningful snap for this. And y'all already have them as Heisman favorites. But, Dude, it's Las Vegas. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I get the Spencer Rattler love. But, I mean, like, I, I don't I don't get the, the C.J. Stroud love. So, they, evidently, everybody's high on this guy. Um, so, you know, Master Teague, Mayan Williams, those running backs, they'll do a, a committee-style running back for Ohio State. I'm sure they'll try and pound it to where they can try and get C.J. Stroud kind of comfortable back there in the pocket. But, man, does he inherit – Two just NFL ready yeah. wide receivers. Yes. Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. Are you kidding me? Yes. I mean, what a, a talent to inherit if you're a first year starting quarterback. I mean, that 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 right there is gonna put them way ahead of the game. Of course, Minnesota has Tanner Morgan. He's yep. a three year starter. I yep. mean, you know, you've got a, a, one of the most underrated running backs probably in the league with Mohammed I, I Ibrahim, I think is how you pronounce his name. Ibrahim? Ibrahim? I don't know. I don't know how you pronounce his name, but he had a thousand yards rushing. In only seven games, 15 touchdowns. So, I mean, Minnesota's... Minnesota, they had a great season last right. year. Right. They had a great season last year, and I think that's why everybody's kind you of circling... You have to respect them if you're Ohio State. I think that's why everybody's kind of circling this game, like, as their Thursday night game, obviously. Uh, just because it's... it's Ohio State has to travel to Minnesota. It's not just a home game. It's not Absolutely. just a... Absolutely. And, you know, they're coming off that loss. They lose so much talent. I think this can really determine... Because I've heard a lot of people... Um, Talk about. I think I even heard Cole Kubelik say it the other day. Talk about the only reason that Ohio State is ranked as high as it is right now because of all that talent they lost is because their name is Ohio State yeah. and because they have Ryan Day at coach. But they Which, do bring back some. They again, do bring they back do, some talent. They do bring like back a lot of talent. But I think it's one of those things where it, it's it's Ryan Day and and Dabo Sweeney and and Nick Saban have that factor where 
They well, have, they've earned it, though. Yeah, I mean, look at Notre Dame. Notre Dame's ranked in the top ten, but nobody's sitting there saying, oh, man, I really don't want to play Notre Dame when we get to the playoff. <laughs> I mean, after the last few years, are you kidding me? Is there anybody who wouldn't sign well, up to play I, Notre Dame in the playoffs? Well, that's what I'm Absolutely saying. You, you've earned that right. You know but you have you, earned your you've earned the you've right. You've earned the right you've been there. My point with that was that I think that this can determine how, obviously, as many first games of the season does, I think yeah. it can really determine how Ohio State moves forward. And then the very next week, they play at Oregon. So – this game has a lot of, you know, kind of can you polish up the edges? Even if you win, you all right, can't so, be polished in it. All right. So quickly, score prediction. Who do you, do you have Ohio State winning the game? What's 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 the line on this game? Is I it? Is I have it, it down uh, here. Fourteen. It is at fourteen. Ohio would State you would you take 14, the points, yeah. Tyler, or would you say that Minnesota can keep it close? I don't think they can keep it close. Really? If, if, really? if it's me, Ohio. I say Ohio State wins by at least three scores. I'm gonna take. Ugh. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take the three? Buckeyes thirty-eight to twenty. I would. I would probably agree with you. I take 38 20 so Buckeyes roll. Yeah. I'm gonna go plus fourteen. I think Minnesota keeps it. You close. think you can keep it close. closer than plus? Wow, that eight. But I think Ohio State wins by ten. I'm gonna. I'm gonna kind of okay. get in between there. I think they're gonna win by ten. Okay. Uh, I don't really have. I mean, I I would love that because that means it's a closer game for tomorrow night for us to watch. So I'll take that. But yeah. I. I think that a 38-20 shellacking, where it's close in the first two quarters. That's fair. And then Ohio State's talent just pulls not, away I mean, we're not half. that far. We're a score off, so, so I mean, that's fair. But I think I think Minnesota keeps it close for most of the game. They just can't kind of keep it contained, if that makes right. sense. I think they, ultimately they get... it comes down to Tanner Morgan. You know, he's a good quarterback. He's not going to lose you games. Right. He's not going to win you games. He's hey, gonna... it's a, a Tyler Johnson. A Tyler he's Johnson. the Tyler yeah, Johnson honestly. for the uh, the Gophers. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. They're he's very not... comparable. They're actually pretty comparable they, they really quarterbacks. Are. He's so. not going to wow you with anything. No, he's not. Well, no, but he's uh, tough as nails. I'll give him that. Tanner that Morgan said, is a tough as nails quarterback. Who can win you games in Sam Howell. Oh, yes. Absolutely. The, the, the 100%. Sam Howell watch is officially on starting Friday night. So another – we have a weird week of games. We have a Wednesday night. The, which Thursday night is slightly weird, but then a Friday night as well. Uh, UNC travels to Virginia Tech. And UNC is only a five-and-a-half point favorite. Number 10 UNC is only a five-and-a-half point favorite in this game. And obviously all eyes are going to be on Sam Howell. What are you looking for for North Carolina to justify their number 10 ranking? Well, now, look, they they ran all over Virginia Tech last year. I mean, they ran for 399 yards on, on the ground last season against the Hokies. And, and look, look, Virginia Tech has not looked like the Virginia Tech that we grew up watching. Yeah, Justin, I, you know, they, they're just not as feared anymore uh, in Blacksburg as they once were. Justin Fuente might be on the hot seat. I, I think so, bit. too. If, if this game is not close and Virginia Tech doesn't look competitive in their first few games, I think Justin Fuente could find himself on the hot seat. But but look, Sam Howell is is is, is the real deal. I mean, he they, they were fifth in the country in offensive yards last year. I mean, and I, I think Sam Howell should be a Heisman favorite. And if they win nine to ten games and he looks good, I mean, because they're they're in the opposite division of Clemson, correct? Right, correct. correct. The Clemson so, does not draw them this year. They, right, they and, and they don't play during the regular So, I mean... It's very possible North Carolina could win 10-plus games this year. No, very I, possible. I think so. I think they're going to be the big competition for – I think they'll make it in their division and then they'll play Clemson in the SEC Championship, which will be a great game. It would but be great. They, oh, yeah. The, the thing game. that I think you look for for North Carolina on offense anyways is they lost two running backs to the draft. Yes, they year. did. I think they both Two very the, good running backs, I think they both too. won the second round, too. I think so, uh, yeah. So, I mean, you lose – that is a ton of production – Yes. The running back, oh, right? 100%. Yeah. And that kind of allows – I mean, Sam Howell is obviously great, and he doesn't have to do that, but that allows him to at least take some pressure off of him to make all those plays. If you have a great running game, you can just say, okay, we can hand the ball off for a couple, couple I think plays. they brought in a get... transfer from Tennessee to uh, running yes, back. They Ty did. Chandler? Ty Chandler, yeah, Ty yes, Chandler. they did. Yeah, he they backed did. up uh... – was it Eric Gray from Tennessee? Yes. Also yes. Out. Yeah. So, yes. so I mean, two great yeah. well, 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 a lot of kids transferred yes. out of Tennessee. Yes, so. they lost a bunch of people. That's so not a shocker. Do we, do we have UNC covering that five and a half then? Oh, I think so. I, I think that's just out of respect on the fact that it's a first week road game for UNC. I think that's all that is. I yeah, think they too. definitely. I mean, also, I mean, a touchdown covers that five and a half. It does. So, yeah. It I mean, does. also, it definitely that covers doesn't that. know much about. North Carolina this year, and that's kind of like yeah. You don't know anything except for Sam Howell. Yeah. You know There's he's good, but you don't need anybody to deliver their receivers or anything. You since, we anything since we touched on Sam Howell, let me just get y'all's Heisman picks really quick. End of the season. Okay. Since we just so, talked about Sam Howell, and obviously the other okay. Well, see, Rattler. this isn't fair. Now, now listen, because the guy that I think is going to win uh-huh. versus the guy that I would say if I was betting on. <laughs> They I mean, look, same? <laughs> no, I, I because if, if if I well, I'm just saying betting because if he was to win it, then he I'd win the jackpot. Oh, okay, I, okay, well, got you. Got if you. I was a betting man, I put some money on Matt Corral. 
I don't know why I feel this way, but I feel like Matt Corral is going to put up a bunch of yards and touchdowns in this Lane Kiffin offense here. He's in a a high-powered Lane Kiffin offense. Very high-powered. And he's got some skills. The guy can move. He can wheel and deal a little bit. But, I mean, come on now. The favorite, if if you had to put a gun to my head and said who's going to win, Spencer Rattler. I mean, the Oklahoma is is Heisman U. I mean, my goodness. They they pump. It's because – they don't play defense in the Big Twelve like like they do everywhere else for some reason. Hey, or maybe was... maybe they're now. I have I have a friend who would sit here and argue with me and say that they don't play defense anywhere. That the offenses in the Big Twelve are just better. That's what he would argue. <laughs> so well, all State... that to say, Oklahoma just utilizes their quarterbacks just unlike any other team does. That's Lincoln Riley. Lincoln Riley right. just makes his quarterback the focal point of the offense. And so Spencer Riley, that's what he's going to be. He's going he's to put up a bunch of got. Gaudy yards and touchdowns, and then they'll get stomped in the playoff. I mean, he is far I mean, and away the Heisman favorite right now, without a doubt. I mean, you know, you could say Bryce Young, you could say uh, Sam Howell, but I mean, realistically, come on, Spencer Rattler's the favorite. DJ Ujulele, I mean, you could say him. I mean, you, I, I think there's one running back who's in the top ten for favorites in the uh, odds. It's a uh, blah, 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 blah. is it John Robinson? Bijan? But Bijan is, is is he from the, Texas. Texas? Texas, yeah. Well, but I don't, but how do you say his name? Bajan, and, I believe. Bajan, and he's I gonna and good. he's gonna be featured a lot in this in, in that new Sark <laughs> offense. Emory but Jones is thirty to one. Yeah, no, that, that, I, I don't believe I don't that, that one one bit. <laughs> I don't I don't buy that. All right, one so just to go off your, your top five Heisman odds here, uh, I think this is from CBS. Spencer Rattler is eleven to two from Oklahoma, obviously. DJ Ugalele is seven to one from Clemson, and then you have Bryce Young at nine to one, CJ Stroud at ten to one. JT Daniels twelve to one. Sam Howell is all the way down at fifteen to one. And then you have another guy who is actually going to be tested this coming week in Derek King from Miami. Oh yeah, he'll be tested to real. If, if he performs well against Alabama's defense, that definitely shoots Derek King's draft. Oh, not draft stock. Heisman stock. So let's so let's move on. We got your sure. Heisman. Well, go Wait, ahead. you gotta say your Heisman odds. Who you think's your favorite? Oh, um, Spencer Rattler's. Spencer Rattler. Rattler. I mean, come on, you're, you're crazy if you don't say like Spencer the, Rattler's say, favorite. It's, the, it's just the odds on favorite. I really, uh, honestly, my dark horse would be Bijan Robinson just because he's in that Sark offense, and I could see him using him a lot like he did Najee Harris at Alabama, just because he's that dynamic kind of player um barring injury or anything like that yeah. that would be my dark horse who i would think would be cool to see win it because it's a running oh, back yeah. it's not a quarterback you know kind of go off of that spencer is just like it, it, it's an Oklahoma quarterback he's got to put up numbers kind of thing you know it's kind of it would be the boring it's the boring pick it is it, the boring pick but it, it, here we are it is a boring uh, pick. My, my favorite i was gonna yeah, say yeah sorry quick. sorry i thought you already Ugalele said it. from clemson would probably be my favorite and then two dark horses would probably be I was looking, and uh, Mackenzie Milton, remember him from UCF? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That? Oh, yeah. No, that, that that's a good dark horse, too. Yes. Yeah. Florida State. Florida State has to, the only problem with that is Florida State has to perform. Win. Was yes. Bo Nix anywhere in those Heisman odds? Was he was oh, he gosh. way on down the list? Oh, I'm gosh. sure he's not. He's not. I didn't think he was. Well, I didn't this think is, he was. This only goes to fifty to one. So okay. I mean, if you go. But it, the, 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 do I see Brian Robinson's name at the bottom of that list? Wow. I, I, and, and I mean, there there are people that's saying that it's going to be a running back by committee, but I. I like to see those odds because I'm telling you, I think that Brian Robinson will be featured a lot. They Brian Robinson at 51, but they have the – who's the other running back for Alabama right now? Trey Sanders. They have him at like 70 to 1, so it's not like, you know, it's kind of – They know they're going to get their touches for sure. I think they know they're going to get touches and then they don't know who's going to get the most touches kind of thing, so it's kind of like – let's just throw that out there. So The other name I was going to say would – Spencer – what's his name? Ryder from uh, Cincinnati. Oh, it's uh, Riddler. uh, Yeah. Ritter? Ritter. 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 Yeah, something. I'm like yeah, Desmond yeah, Ritter, yeah. Though. Desmond Ritter. Desmond yeah, he's he, that that offense is sent around the quarterback as well. Any any offense where the quarterback runs, throws, does the option, they're going to get a lot of stat padding to it. So I mean, they're going to look really flashy. And if they win, if they if they win ten plus wins, I I'm a firm believer that if your team in, for the Heisman, you have to be on a a a contending team. That's okay. my that's the way I feel about it. Because if you're just winning, you, but it, I mean not winning, but if you're just putting stats up and your team's losing, would you really are you really a Heisman? You, you, you have MVP? to. I mean, almost all Heisman. Is, isn't that a Heisman? What they essentially yeah. is the MVP. They almost I mean, all, they almost all win at least ten games. Yeah, right. So so let's move really quick through three games, and we'll talk about obviously the two. Well, I guess the biggest game from for Saturday. So let's move on to two other big games from Saturday. Or three other ones. Uh, we have Penn State at Wisconsin, so kind of a, a Big Ten matchup, top twenty-five matchup, kind of to start the season. Right. Uh, a lot of people have Wisconsin could be winning the Big Ten this year. I think they, you know, they got struck by COVID a lot last year. They got a new starting quarterback in Graham Mertz, who, you know, for the first two games were kind of COVID struck the entire team. 
kind of went off. I think he had like seven touchdowns in his first game he started. It was something crazy. Right. And then a lot of people obviously see Penn State. You want to see them kind of bounce back from that really, really down year they had last year. Um, I'm blanking on the coach's name for Penn State. Franklin, Franklin, James yes, Franklin. James Franklin yeah. has, has this insane recruiting class coming in. I think Absolutely, it's next yeah. year. Yeah. He's like the it's number already, one. It's, it's, it's number one right yeah. now, He's actually. Penn State one. is, yeah. So, I, right you, now, I mean, that's, it's early, but it's, it is number one so right Wisconsin's now. So, Wisconsin's a five and a half point favorite right now. That's kind of the, I think that's mostly the three, three of those points is home field, and then they just kind of have that little two and a half right there sprinkled in. What do you see coming from this game, Cole? Uh, well, it really depends on Sean Clifford and how he develops as the Nittany Lions quarterback because last year we saw him kind of look a little shaky in a few games. And, and, and again, that was not the best Penn State football team. And they went 4-5 and five last year. And right. obviously, you, like you alluded to, they were struck by COVID a couple of times and they had, you know, they had a couple of games canceled and whatnot. And this is a very this is a very good Badgers defense, and that's something you can always say about Wisconsin. They put out defense. They're they're those cornbread fed boys. I mean, they're always a big defensive line. They they can run the football. But I so, mean, uh, uh, kind of a going off the run there. They had a transfer coming in as a running back, Ches Malusi. Ches Malusi for Wisconsin. Yeah, from, he's uh, from yeah, he's from Clemson. Clemson. Yeah. yeah. So you got a Clemson guy coming in. So he's if he's a Clemson guy, he's probably five star. <laughs> Probably, so, I would assume he's a pretty good running back. So you've got and now he's inheriting a pretty in. good offensive line in Wisconsin. Right, so, right. I, I don't know. This, I think this is a big game for James Franklin because we haven't really seen him get a big win lately for us. So yeah. I, I think that he really needs to win this. If I had to put it on a scale of desperation for the two schools, I think Penn State needs this game more than Wisconsin. And so for it to be five and a half points, you said is that what you said for the, Wisconsin's for Wisconsin's favor? Five and a half. Uh huh. I think Penn State's going to play with some fire this year. I don't know why I feel like Penn State's a dark horse for the Big Ten this year, but I like Penn State, so I'm going to go with Penn State beating Wisconsin oh, this week. Well, they beat them. They don't even cover. They beat them. I think they're going to. I think they're going to go into Camp Randall, and I think they're going to upset uh, Wisconsin. So, I do. I I feel strong about the Nittany Lions this year. So Penn State kind of has two games on their schedule that kind of can make or break their season kind of very early on. This one right here. This <laughs> one. And then the Auburn game. And the Auburn game they in two the, weeks, yeah. The Auburn game in two weeks, though, they have at home, and it's a whiteout. Which, Happy Valley and a whiteout is one of the most electric things in college football ever. So, like, it, it's so hard to pick it against It can definitely State boost their season, I for sure. I think that it's going to be a very close game. I think that Wisconsin will not cover, but they'll win. So, I think it'll be a three-point game. I think it'll okay. be kind of a last-minute field goal, maybe. Last-minute kind of, field goal. Kind of, or maybe, maybe they're just up by 10, and, and Penn State scores late to make it a three-point game. Right. You know, and then they just can't get the that onside kick, or they can't stop them that last time or whatever. So, I like Penn State. Steven likes Wisconsin. Tyler, what do you see? <laughs> it's a, like it's a toss up. It's, I mean, I, I don't know. This is this. It's 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 always hard predicting week one because we definitely, haven't seen the teams definitely. play. Exactly. It's always hard. We're we're all we need to keep track. of We're this. going strictly off of no, last year's speculation. I mean, that's what I will, it is. I will keep track of all of our all of our yeah, uh, guesses because yeah. I I forgot. All of them, we'll we'll write them all down. We'll, write we'll, them down we'll, and then we'll keep we'll etch them down in blood. At the end of the year, yeah. No, I I think I'm gonna go. I would say Penn State just because they're at home. Okay. Well, they're at, no, Wisconsin. Wait, they're at Wisconsin. Oh, they're at, they're at okay. Wisconsin. Give me Wisconsin. <laughs> so home favoring team. the home, no, team's home team. And, and, and that's a good honest, point. It's, it's honest tough. to God, this, I, I think this game can just be a toss-up. To, it yeah, it, it yeah. could go either way. Well, it for could sure, go either that's way. what I said. That you get the three points for being at home anyway, so really Vegas is only giving them two and a half points if you really look at it that way because yeah, Wisconsin at home. Yeah, that's true. So That's true. They're almost calling it a toss-up. I mean, yeah. they're, they're almost. So the next game, another Big Ten game that's a top 25 matchup is Indiana at Iowa. So, I really don't know what to expect from either one of oh, these man. teams. Just, and Indiana obviously had a We're game. really scraping the bottom of the barrel of our football knowledge when we start talking about Indiana and Iowa. <laughs> I don't think any of us it's pay top, attention well, to Indiana and Iowa. I, I did watch oh, I know. I know. I'm just messing yeah, with you. Yeah, I'm I did watch some Indiana you. last year. They had, right. They had that oh, yeah. We, we, we all saw that. They, they had some flashes against great Ohio season, State and whatnot. They had some year. flashes. So, what do you see from either one of these just throughout the Big Ten this year? Not even necessarily th- from the national standpoint, just from, from the Big Ten and from their division or divisions. I don't even know if they're in the same division or not. What what do you see coming from them? I now 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 look. Iowa is one of those teams that always has one game in them that they win that right. they shouldn't. I, I mean, I, I don't I don't know what it is. It, Kirk Ferentz is still the 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 co- the head coach for Iowa, correct? If I'm not mistaken, I believe he's still the head coach. <laughs> I'm gonna for say Iowa. yes, Cole. <laughs> I, I, if, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, I believe that that Ferentz is still the coach at Iowa. I, I'm just I'm not, that's just me just. Going off of the little knowledge I have, I like the Hawkeyes it. I love the Hoosiers, it. But I believe I like that he it. is. But 
their teams are always usually pretty prepared on Saturdays. He's he's one of those really buttoned up type programs. They're going to run the football. They're a tough minded type team. I look. Is it at Iowa or at Indiana? It is at Iowa. <sighs> look. Yes, it's at Iowa. We really it, we don't know a lot about a lot of teams for Week One. This is these are two teams I definitely don't know much about. I'll go ahead and take the Hawkeyes though and say that they're going to beat Indiana. I, I, Kirk, Fer- there you go. See, I know, I know a little You're bit. Right. You're right. I know right. a little bit. Okay, so I, I like Kirk Ferentz squad. I'll take the Hawkeyes. They got that little tradition where they have the little wave. Is yes. that is that them that yes. they wave yes. to the uh, the children's them. hospital or whatever? That is them. They 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 tend to play really well at home. So I'm gonna give I'm gonna take Iowa. Aren't, aren't they? Aren't, isn't their stadium like out there in the middle of the cornfield or whatever? It, it, I don't know if it's. It's by the hospital, obviously. I know, it's by but, the I, hospital, but I, 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 think, I think if you like look out in the distance, I mean, I mean, pretty much all that's out in there in Iowa is just. I was gonna cornfields. say that's just uh, that's so. Just, I mean, uh, Iowa in general. Um, <laughs> I'll take Iowa. Whatever the points are, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, say that they cover. If you cover. can't tell, and you didn't follow us back uh, when we had co- when we didn't have COVID two years ago, uh, we are SEC guys. So uh, when we get oh to, yeah, we, we we venture out. When from, we get to the dark horses, we venture of, out to the Big, of the Big Ten. Ten. We we get a little lost here. Uh, hey, it just means more, okay, Stephen. <laughs> it just means more here in the south so i'm looking for another uh i guess i i think he'll keep it up from last season michael be Penix. different steven take indiana make make it make it That's interesting for do. us i was gonna say michael <laughs> Penix is gonna have a great season and he's gonna start it off by beating iowa at home okay so it's gonna be so game. i like iowa tyler what you got steven likes indiana i, I think i like iowa honestly okay at home, okay. I mean, you know, they they're not, they're, they, they got not, the swag of the black jersey. They're kind of like the Steelers. Their uniforms yeah. remind me of the Steelers Very when they come so. out. I'm like, get, ooh, okay. I think of, I always think of Iowa as like hard nose, like pounding. Oh, oh yeah, eye you know? formation. Yeah, you know, just yeah, you better button your chin straight. Probably thinking of it. Iowa Absolutely. from like 2007, but that's just how I think of Iowa now. So here, here we go. All right, one more game, then we can get into the the biggest game of, of Saturday. Of course, um, other than Alabama and Auburn for for those fans uh, from here or UAB. Uh, Louisiana at Texas. Okay. So this game is big because you you have Texas obviously is always trying to come back. His Texas back, whatever else. You have a new coach in Steve Sarkeesian, but Louisiana had a sneaky good season last year. They a did. lot of people that uh, are you know picking them as one of those uh, non Power Five schools that that you know has a chance to to be up there uh, at the end of the season to make a New Year's Six bowl to do whatever else. What do you see coming from this game? Well, so originally, this is kind of ironic that you put this game in the rundown because I had, for my doghouse segment, one of the teams that I had in the doghouse <laughs> uh-huh. was Louisiana. Okay. Because I really do – I don't know what it is about this squad. Maybe it's just the fact that their name is the Raging Cajuns, that, for that's God's great sake. Name. I mean, like that's that, that alone that, – I mean, that's a great name for a football team. But they're quite possibly the toughest group of five teams that you can play right now. I mean, can we all agree on that? Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Uh, Chanticleers, Coastal Carolina, and Louisiana. They're, they're the toughest teams. And so Texas gets a horrendous draw as this being their open opening game. There, there's was word from Sarkeesian on his press conference on, on Monday, I believe, that he said that they, they could possibly play two quarterbacks, have a two-quarterback system coming in Saturday. So, and that will not bode well against this team. Because so, Levi right. Lewis and this Cajun offense, they're, they're good. They're, I mean, they, they won 10 games last year, and they score points. So, I mean, the, uh, the, the fighting, uh, is it a... Uh, who, who's their head coach? Is it uh, Bill Napier? Billy Napier. Billy Napier. I mean, the, the fighting Napiers are are pretty dang good. So I, I I'm highly rated in Cajun man. I'm not gonna say that Texas is gonna lose. I don't think. I think Texas wins the game. Okay. But I think this game is closer than we so, think. So Texas, just off of that, Texas is an eight point favorite. No, they're gonna win. They're gonna cover the points. They'll, they'll win by eight. The okay. line was huge at one point. It was like double digits at one point, and I, I was like, like, man, I might, wow. I should jump on that. But <laughs> it's since dropped because I mean that it was just it was just so high. Okay. But, uh, so I, I will have a kind of a, just a stat for you. What I read, anyways, is that I believe on the depth chart, Hudson Card. He's going to start. The starter. He's a starter. He's a starter for so sure. He is, uh, he's and Casey off, Thompson a, is set to split reps with him. Okay. So, I mean, for what that's worth. That's that's just what – Sark just said that. And then 24-7 Sports also confirmed that, that that they did say that there's a possibility of playing both quarterbacks in the first okay. half. Which, I mean, this is a game that you would hope that you would play. Right. So, I have, a, I have a stat for you that is based on him being a true freshman and the starter. So, he's only the fifth true freshman to start at Texas. The last one to start was Shane – Bouchelet, I believe is how you say his last name. Shane Bouchelet. Is that right? In 2016, y'all remember him? I kind of I remember that name when I read it, but I don't I remember the pronunciation. And then Colt McCoy in 2006 before that, and then I think the last guy was in like 1992, and then the guy before him was in 1970 or something like that. So it's not a 
common theme for Texas right. Southern true freshman. Right. True freshman quarterback is all I was saying there. Um, I think Texas is going to be much improved this year. Now, much improved. How much First improved? year with Sarkeesian. I, I don't know how much improved that, that's going to look like. Like I, I said, I, I believe in Bajon Robinson. I believe that he'll use him in creative ways and get him touches because you get your electric players touches when you're a great offensive coordinator like Steve Sarkeesian. I think that Louisiana keeps it close for three quarters, and Texas kind of pulls away with their depth and everything like that. I, at the I, end. I, would, I would say that, that um, that's probably so. I think Texas that's probably good, good wins by by fourteen. Okay, fourteen. Ten okay. to fourteen. Double digits. Let's put it that way. Double digits, but not above. That's close. That's not close above twenty-one. Game. That's probably closer than what Longhorn fans want. So. Correct. Not above twenty-one, but double digits. <laughs> Tyler, <laughs> what, what do you think <laughs> Texas has to win for people to consider Sark's first year a success? How many how many wins do you think they have to get? I think, I think eight is realistic. I think they can win eight. seven eight or eight games. I think yeah. eight is realistic. I think fans won't be happy unless so they eight win nine or ceiling. ten. I agree, eight. but that's also Texas fans. All right, again, again, we go through this. So eight or nine, eight or nine is like a you know ceiling successful as as UAB is getting a huge play against Jacksonville. Let's go. So <laughs> as we're still watching UAB Jacksonville State live, uh, but yeah, Texas. I think that Texas can definitely get to eight or nine wins this year, but I think for it to be considered a success, like you said, they definitely have to get to seven or eight wins. Have to get to a bowl game if you're Steve, yeah. Steve Sarkeesian in your first year. However, 100%. however, I, I do think Texas is one of those teams where you could see winning eight or nine games, but you also could say, man, they could, they could win six or seven games. They could. I mean, yeah. you know, it, that, it, it, it can go bad. It very can go quickly back and forth with that, depending on how their schedule goes. I, I haven't actually looked in depth at their schedule. We'll get more into depth with team schedules. In the coming weeks, as we see them, how they perform in yeah, week one. Yeah, next year, let's start the show before uh, week one, like a little bit before week one. Yeah, so, so we, we kind can... of preview teams a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of, kind of dust up on each other a little bit. So there is one more game that's set yeah. out, outside the local area that's considered, I guess, the huge game Saturday. Of course, in this state, the only games meaningful is Alabama and Auburn. Correct. But outside of this, the biggest game obviously is Clemson and Georgia. And I mean, this is when I saw this game. A few years back, I, I I just knew it was going to be a huge game because I mean, you know Georgia just got Kirby Smart, Davo Sweeney's doing his thing at Clemson, so this is a huge opening game and really a tone setter for both teams. But my evaluation for this game is is this is not an elimination for either one of these two teams. If you go out there and you're competitive and you lose the game, you're still you you can still get your way back to the playoff if you're Georgia or Clemson. If Clemson loses to Georgia. They can win out and get to the playoff and maybe even rematch Georgia if they get there. And Georgia, the same path. If you lose to Clemson but then go and run the table in the SEC, beat Alabama, get to the playoff, you're right back in it. So this is not this is more of a, a tryout to try and impress everybody and sh- say, like, hey, I'm for real. And if you're Georgia, and again, this is me saying, like, who, who needs this game more type of deal, I think this game needs more to Georgia. That's just my opinion. I think Clemson has already proven in the biggest stages they can win. I think for Georgia, they need to show we're for real. Like we've we've talked enough. We've been beaten by Alabama in the, in the SEC championship game, in the playoff national championship game. We've had had all these talking heads say, "Hey, Georgia's this, Georgia's that." I mean, I saw on College Game Day last Saturday, everybody was picking Georgia to win the SEC and get to the college football playoff. It's time for them to show up. It's time for them to go out there and, and show us that hey we're Georgia we I'm Kirby Smart I'm supposedly the Sabanite the you know the second coming of Coach Saban well go out there and get your team to prove it right. and so I, I think this is a great stage for for Georgia to do that but it's it could not be a tougher test than Clemson who might be one of you know the top five maybe one of the best teams in college football this season I think this is one of those games where it's obviously opening weekend so everybody's gonna it's a great game that we love and we'll all overreact but I think this is one of those games that where it could be anywhere in the season it would it could possibly be game of the year no matter where it was in the season absolutely uh Obviously, with Georgia, like you said, this is kind of the year. This would be their year. This was it was uh, what was it twenty seventeen when it could have been their year when they lost yep. in the national championship. This is like this is the next time that this is this should be their year. They finally got a quarterback in J T. Daniels that can do something, right? Yes, and that he showed at the end of the year. Now, can he carry that production over? Obviously, they lose uh, their best receiver in. Um, Golly, I just uh, George Pickens for yep. most of the year. I think he oh, might. Oh yeah, the injury. I think yeah, it's very iffy if he bugs. comes back to the Man. end. I think yeah. they lost their starting safety as well, so that hurts them a lot. But their defensive line, if it's not the best, is one of the best in the country, especially with the amount of depth they have. That like their second string defensive line could start for ninety nine percent of any other Everybody team. Everybody except Alabama and Clemson. 
I mean, they, literally, they have to, they'd have to battle it out with other guys. They're literally, their talent, second so. their second string is that good <laughs> no, on George's their defensive good. line. George is so, good. It's good. And obviously for the Clemson, you lose Trevor Lawrence. You lose. Right. Uh, but you uh, – what's right. their uh, – Justin Ross. You still have Justin Ross at receiver. Yeah. Uh, you lose uh, Travis Etienne at running back. You've had for – I think he was a – was he a three-year starter or a four-year starter? He was there for a while. He was so there for like, a while. I know that uh, So much. you lose yeah, that production with him. But obviously Clemson is that – is it's another one of those, like I said, with Ohio State earlier. It's 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 the, it's the name. It's their recruiting. It's their, their um, a bit, uh, ability to – uh, develop talent at Clemson. I've seen this go back and forth. So when I saw this, I guess when the game, I guess when they started talking about college ball again about a month ago or so, on, right. you know, talk shows or whatever else, everybody was picking Clemson to win. As it's getting closer, I've seen more and more and more people pick Georgia. And to, I'm I guess, one of them. I guess, I'm one of them. I guess upset yeah. is the right word, even though it's a three-point game and it's, it's number not, three versus number five. It's not really an upset, but I, I totally agree with you though that this is not a this is not a season ender. This is more of a see where you're at at the very beginning. It's a very tough, it's a good obviously. Test. That, yeah, it's a good great test, test to see where you are. So Cole, for once on the show, I'm going to agree with you. I think Georgia wins. I think Georgia wins this game. This I think is it's really a, setting up for a Georgia. But I win. don't. I mean, it's not a. I don't think this is. It's like, not going to be easy. I, this is a close game. It's going man. to take a near perfect game from Georgia to win at Clemson. But that I think it's going to take perfect play on. I think on if both Georgia the wins this game, though, I think if they win this game, it'll be similar to the 2019 LSU, 2020 Alabama. They'll be on a mission. They'll be walking into stadiums. If you beat Clemson, is it same in for their Clemson? stadium? Same for Clemson. Oh, if man. you beat them at the beginning of the year, you walk into every other game. The well, rest Clemson's of the year, Clemson's going to walk into every one of their games in the ACC and know they're oh, the best man, team. Man. That's that's different. That See, is Georgia. Different. Georgia's trying to really just put their briefcases on the table and say, "Listen, we're for real." Looking at Texas a and looking at Florida, looking at Alabama. Look at this. You see, we went into Clemson and beat them. Yeah. We want you guys to know this team is legit. Yeah, this I think they walk in. They walk in saying prime they're time gonna... Saturday night game, and you put a thrashing. Well, not a thrashing, but you beat Clemson. Yeah, I mean, you beat Clemson. They're not thrash Clemson. You beat Clemson. It's a it's a, a huge. It's win. a huge it's deal. A season changer. It's a yes. It's, it's a season yes. changer. I, either team, I think, has a chance to come back. Clemson, if they if they lose another game, they're out completely. Oh Georgia, yeah! I think oh they, no! If you if you lose twice, yeah, you're, yeah, you're, Georgia, you're out. If the fourteen current playoff system, yeah, you're out. With yeah, yeah. Losses, so for sure. Um, but I, I, I have Georgia winning a very close one. Uh, this is Kirby's year, though. I heard something crazy that Kirby's seat might get hot, but that's just insane. Yeah. No. Again, I heard no, that. I, not saying it. It would have to be that. something drastic. Yeah. Like they, they only win like four or five you make, games. You, say, you don't make no. Kirby seat hot because this is the highest. Because they've been really relevant. Like, I mean, they're yeah. relevant every year for this for contention. So you can't do that. I see. I see you chomping at the bit over there. I was going to say, I think, I think you'll see both teams probably score 40-plus in a lot of games this year, a lot of games. But I think both offensive lines are kind of banged up going into the beginning of this game and the beginning of the season. Uh, so I really think it's going to come down to defense, and you're going to kind of see a slobber knocker, a low-scoring game. And if that's the case, I think you got to give the edge to Georgia. I love the term slaughter. I was about to say, that I giggled is, a little bit when great, I heard that. That was beautiful. That is a beautiful that term is, right that there. Is like, that's the so podcast I'm, like chef's kiss. I'm, I'm going to use that for now. Slaughter knocker fest. I like slaughter that. Knocker. I'm going to say, I agree with Tyler. I think this is going to be a, a kind of a defense. I, I think at the beginning of this game, we're going to see a defensive struggle because this is going to be two new quarterbacks who are kind of taking full-time reps for the first time ever. So I think, I mean, because, you know, DJ usually, of course, he had those two games when Trevor Lawrence was obviously with, with COVID pro- protocols. And then JT Daniels, of course, he had those few games where he played. But this, they've been, all offseason, they've been getting all the reps. Right. So this is their first time. And this is going to be two defenses. I mean, these are proud defenses from the SEC. And then, of course, Clemson with uh, Vrabels. I mean, they're, uh, they're defensive coordinator Venables, as well. Venables. Venables. Sorry, not Vrabels. Vrabels is, Vrables uh, is the Tennessee, ten- head, is Tennessee head, coach. head coach. Tennessee Sorry, Titans. Venables. <laughs> Venables. <laughs> I had something right yeah. there. Uh, but this is going to be two defenses that are going to be really good, too. So, I think it'll be – I can see a defensive struggle in the first half and then maybe one team kind of pulling away in the fourth quarter. I'll take Georgia 38-30 on the road. Ooh, high scoring. I have, I, have it more, I have it more Georgia 24, Clemson 17 because I, I like – Only I really, 17 points I at all, that, Clemson? I really Ooh. like Tyler's – Slobber knocker. It, it convinced me. Slobber knocker. That I, it is can, great, it man. Me We're that gonna have to have a segment of the show in the future. Slobber knocker. It's gonna be the slaughter knocker. Slobber knockers. <laughs> That's the segment. Slobber knockers. Uh, that is I, great. I, I, that I, I do agree. I think it's uh, Georgia's defense is really good. Obviously, defenses can still be really good 
in this day and age in college football. And it's you hard. Still it's hard. Say offenses can still score. You know, twenty. If you uh, only allow a team twenty one points, you're an excellent. You're doing, defense, you're doing a good. Right? You're doing a good. Yeah, but I, good job I mean, I defense. think that yeah, the, sure. you know. For sure. DJ Ugalele didn't play anything like a Georgia defense. This Georgia defense, especially last year, obviously the injuries kind of hurt Georgia. Uh, but twenty-four uh, seventeen, I like that. I like that. Seven point Sounds game, twenty-four seventeen. I like it. I like it. A couple field goals. Yeah. No, honestly, I agree with you. I think yeah. twenty-four seventeen. Okay. Good score. Yeah. Suck it, Cole. Uh, <laughs> let's move on to the two. We uh, need a segment called Suck, suck It, Cole. Cole. Yeah. Suck it. Not Cole was wrong. That's a little bit and Suck It, Cole. All right. So yeah, oh, let's man. move on to the two big games for this state, anyways. So we've got we'll move on to the bigger one because Auburn kind of plays a nobody in their first week. Oh, of but course. I still yeah, want to preview. Yeah. I still want to preview their season. Still want to preview them a little bit. Yeah. Of so course. Alabama plays Miami in Atlanta coming up this Saturday. I think it's three thirty Eastern. Uh, great game. Uh, the number one at Bama versus number fourteen Miami. Alabama's a nineteen and a half point favorite coming into it. You see, you see your first reps from Bryce Young, who's at all this expectation around him. He's already the the millionaire kid, you know, coming out here. And then you've got uh, Derek King, who is a running quarterback who t- tends to give Alabama some problems. What do you see coming from this game, and what kind of outlook for both teams do you see on their seasons going forward? Well, now look, Miami has one of the most experienced rosters in college football. They bring back nineteen stars, but however. <laughs> That might not be a good thing that they bring back all those 19 stars because their one lone win last year against a winning, a winning a team with a winning record was six and five Pittsburgh. <laughs> that's that's abysmal. I'm, I'm sorry, that is awful. So Manny Diaz took over the Kings' defensive play calling after, shortly after last year because they they fired their other guy. But then the game after that Manny Diaz took over, with, they gave up 772 yards to North Carolina the very next game that that he took over. I don't know what to expect from Miami. I, I know Derek King can play. I, I know he's a pretty talented quarterback. Miami's been obviously they're they're getting some praise this year with the with the 14 you know ranking of course in the top 25. I, I I don't know. I, I mean, I, I I honestly don't know what to expect from Miami. We're going to see Bill O'Brien get his new play call, play calling duties for yep. Bryce Young. You know, you bring back Slade Bolden, John Mechie at the receivers. You got Ajayi Hall. Could he could he be something that's a kind of a difference maker for that receiving core? That third guy, Brian Robinson, Trey Sanders, Jace McClellan, Roy Dell Williams, the committee running back. We all expect to see. I don't know. This is this is a uh, and of course the tight end uh, Jaleel Billingsley, which is. Second maybe or third maybe on the one of the chart? best tight ends in college football. And he's second or third on the depth chart. So I he's, mean, he's pissed off Saban a few times. So I don't know. He'll play. That's but an I, in-house type thing. I don't know what what, what the deal uh, is on that. But <laughs> as far as what to expect from Bryce Young, I think he's going to be special. I think he's going to be a pretty good quarterback for the University of Alabama. But the problem is, is we just we don't know because we, he has not taken any meaningful reps. Uh, yeah, I think for the pro- Alabama. I think the real problem of Bryce Young or problem is that he has to. You know, come from Tua in 2018, 2019, and then you have Mac Jones, Jones. who has a historic season in 2020. So the bar is set so high. Hey, Bryce Young, all you got to do is match what Mac Jones did. Is a Heisman, what runner up or third place Heisman uh, boat getter, and then you have to, uh, you know, go undefeated and win a national championship. That's all you got to do. Yeah, no, you got to live up to your million dollar nil. That's all you have to do. The the pressure is definitely there for Bryce Young to fill. Uh, so we just talked about it a little bit too. I wanted to touch on Derek King a little bit, just because he's a thirty to one Heisman odds. So people have him improving a lot in his second year in under uh, in Miami. Right. Uh, just kind of learning the offense better, getting you know more. Rhett acclimated. Lashley, by the way, is the offensive coordinator who the former off, the offense coordinator for Auburn under Gus Malzahn. There, okay. he's the current one for Miami. So, okay. so you can expect some similar things. Yeah. Maybe you get maybe get a little more Auburn. acclimated. Maybe you're better. Than Bo Nix at throwing on the run and different oh, stuff like 100%. that. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, I, so, I, I think so. So I think he is, like I said, he is the type of kind of in the preview. He is the type of quarterback that's given Bama. We problems. saw what he did in, at Houston. The, the the guy could play. He can play. I think Bama's just too talented. Uh, the only thing that Miami might have against Bama is that Miami's defensive line is going to be really good this year. Their defensive ends are scary. You you name a guy on that defensive line and they can make a play kind of thing. Right. It's one of those right. you pick one and there you you have to be you scared have to of that guy. Them. You, you know, can't double thing. team them. They're, they're, so, they're yeah, all they're, good. They're not double teams. So I, I think that could give a, a Bama offensive. But this line is a good lost. Bama offensive line. It though. is, but they lost their uh, left tackle. They lost their center. Right. Uh, so I mean, you lose two keys. You lose your quarterback of the off- or quarterback of the offensive line, anyways, in your center in um, Landon Dickerson. Yes. So, uh, just how they handle that will be telling. Obviously, I'm very interested to see if kind of we touched on Jaleel Billingsley actually plays in what he does because they I had think a, he'll play. I think he uh, will, but he's a tight end that they had returning sure. punts. 
They have a tight end. He's just that fast, man. He's that gifted when he gets the ball and so in, in space and whatnot. He's great. So I, I think Miami keeps it close in the yeah. first half. I think so, too. I think so, too. And then Alabama just blows him out in the second half. I, th- I, I think the talent gap is still there. No matter how good my, Miami's – and they're, they're going to look good in a lot of games this year, Miami. Yeah. Will, and, and they're yeah. a pretty good team. The talent gap is still there. Talent and depth. The de- yes, the, the depth. talent and depth is just still there. I mean, Alabama could go two or three players deep. I don't know that Miami can do that just yet. Right. So I think the totality of the game will settle in after about two quarters, and I think Alabama pulls away. And I like I like them getting to about 42, 45 points, and Miami will probably get about 24 points. So I like a score about 45 to 24. I think Alabama pulls away. So cover, away. The, cover the 19 I think they definitely covered the 19 and a half points. And I and I think it's close for the first two quarters, and Alabama pulls away. I think they win and by we'll, three touchdowns. And we'll find out a lot about Bryce Young. And I think though, I think that you know Manny Diaz in this defense is going to throw a lot of different type of blitzes and coverages at Bryce Young to try and confuse him early and try and give him some headaches. And we'll, we're going to. I'm very interested to see how he re- responds under pressure for the first time, and and when it, when it's meaningful rest where you don't have a three, four, five touchdown lead like he did last year. Right, Tyler, what you so, got? I think I, I think Alabama wins by what's the uh, what's nineteen the spread? and a half is the spread. Nineteen and a half, they cover twenty one. I think they win yeah, by three scores. I mean that's as well. that's three scores. Matt, I, think that, they, I think they win yeah. by three touchdowns as well. Three tutties as well. Three tutties. So I love the other three it, tutties. If I ask you, Bryce Young over or under four touchdowns for the game, where you saying? Four touchdowns is a good game. Um, it's passing or say, just total touchdowns. Passing. I'm gonna say under. Ooh. Um, I'm gonna say under. I'm gonna say under four. I, I, I can oh. see him doing two or three passing that's touchdowns, good, maybe getting a rushing touchdown. That's a good. That's a good prop, prop bet for my, prop my bet, Tyler's though. takes. Then last one over under one pick in the first half. I think so. I, I um, saw something that was. I guess that was NFL, but I saw something that was like a under over under picks for like DJ Ugalele and. Uh, Bryce Young, and then somebody else who was starting for the first time. Right. Uh, it was like, you know, one which for there, each. Which, let's just go ahead and say this. There's a lot of new coming quarterbacks here for the SEC this year, and Bryce Young's one of them. So this is going to be a very rookie quarterback type deal for the SEC this Definitely. year. Over under for their wins, though, this year. If you look at Alabama's schedule as a totality, where where do you see – I mean, my, I mean, obviously the ceiling is undefeated. I mean, we've seen Alabama do this countless times. They've gone 11 wins, 12 wins. So, obviously your ceiling is 12. But it being realistic, what is the set wins that you would say if you had to put your money – gun to your head, had to put the money on it, what would you say Alabama's win total will be at the end of the season? So, I, th- I think they're over under for their win total is 11. 11 and a half, uh-huh. right? I think. So, so it's pretty either, much either 11 or 12 wins. Yeah, which one are you going yeah, with? Uh, you want undefeated or are you saying they get one loss? <laughs> so they play at Florida – and they play at Texas A&M. Two this year. very tough road games. The Swamp and the Twelfth Man. Think, that's two very I think Florida tough games. Takes, I honestly think Florida takes a step back. Emory Jones. Oh, Miami. I think so too. I, Emory yeah. Jones is not Kyle Trask. No, you lose Kyle 100%. Pitts. No, uh, no. We and we've seen Emory Jones. We've seen him play. Yeah. So we, um, we know what we're going to get. Texas A&M is supposed to take a big step forward this year. Everybody's like, oh my gosh, Texas A&M. That's so. the game that I just I don't know. I'm happy to see Texas A&M that would play be, a little that bit. Would be, that would be Alabama's. And they do play at Auburn, which is always a sneaky game kind of thing. You know, I'll Auburn, say, I'll say 11 weird. wins this year for Alabama. So they, you, find 11, the one, you find think, a loss? I think that A&M. Is this regular I think, season? I, yes. I, okay. I think that A&M and Florida and Auburn combine those three row games. I think there's somewhere that Alabama could slip. Yeah. I think I there's definitely games that could slip. I think Alabama fans have gotten spoiled with the undefeated and, so. and just winning and just blowing teams away. I think that a lot of teams like Texas a and have taken that step forward. So I think that, that games can be closer now. So that, that would so. be the first time he loses to an assistant, too. I think I think so. And, and he's gone how, how many games? How many 20, games have been? 20-something? 3-0. 23-0. and 0. and 0. So, I mean, it's it, it's it's about time. Some We knew it, it was going to happen at some point, and I think this year might be the year. I'll say so. 11. I like 11. 11. I think you they, like that too, Tyler? Loss. Like eleven wins? They find a loss. Yeah, I don't. You gotta think. I like too. eleven. I mean, I, we, I mean, we don't think they could go as low as ten. We don't see two teams that could potentially no, be out of the schedule, no. right? I mean, I don't, I don't think so. But you never. know. Until they get to the SEC championship game and potentially play Georgia, right? Perhaps. Well, you also gotta I think mean, with that eleven and a half under Nick Saban, Alabama's only had two undefeated seasons. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But they've also only had how many seasons that they had where they've only won uh, less than lost. double digits? What? Let, let's oh, let's win. Uh, like two? nine or something like that. It's because they had one? six and six his first no, year. One. Then one. Six and six. And then, no, they had, uh, they had a nine and three year, right? When they, when, no, when, they uh, went ten and three because they won the bowl game. Didn't they? Oh, okay. No, wait, 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 you're wait. counting postseason. Okay, that I got be, you. Okay. Yeah. 
I meant regular season. Oh, I went. Okay. I was going overall. Okay, I got you. Well, so, then, yes, they had two seasons. Then. So they had. Two. We're going regular season. <laughs> All right. You so, stipulate the rules, Cole. <laughs> so 11, 11, 11, pretty much. We all have around yeah, the board. I, I, think. I don't yeah, see 10? them dropping it to Texas A and M. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I don't see Florida either. It's a weird so yeah, thing. So you got twelve. Yeah, I you, think, do you think they can win twelve games? No, because I can see I mean, them I think losing they can win 12 Ole games Miss for sure. I, I just Ole Miss. I'm playing yeah, safe I Ole Miss here. at home. Yeah, I know. Well, I, I honestly can see them losing to Ole Miss because I mean, Matt yeah. Corral kind of scares me. Haynes King for Texas A and M doesn't scare me. Emory mm. Jones, that's true. Does they not did get scare rid of Kellen Mond, the problem, the so problem, anybody has to be better. Yeah, than but Kellen is this Mond, guy right? an upgrade for? <laughs> I don't know. Has to be better than the Kellen article, Mond. The article I read was that Texas A and M they expect to take a big step forward or, or something like that, and then they said, uh, "Was it Haynes King the new the starter for Texas A <laughs> yeah, and M?" They said right. that Kellen Mond left a very high bar at Texas A and M, and I had to read that sentence like six times, and I'm like. What Kellen Mond were you watching that was a very what high Mon bar for a Texas a He was good, but he was not a very high bar. Yeah, no, he wasn't. Absolutely not. All right, so we've all got – you've got 11. We've all got 11. He finds a loss somewhere else. I think we both likely – most likely for me is the Texas a or Auburn game also just because, like I said, the Auburn game is always sneaky. So moving on to Auburn, right. they play Akron. They have Akron at home, kind of an easy start. They play Penn State in two weeks. I think they have another cupcake next week as they well. Do. They do. So this is kind of two warm-up games to get them going under new coach Brian Harson. Alabama State next week, by the way. Yeah, Alabama <laughs> State. So obviously two two games they should win by you know 35-plus or whatever. Absolutely. Else. My questions for, for you, uh, I've got them written out here. I'm just going to read them word for word. What do you see Bo Nix doing this year? That's my first question. Will their O line be any better than it has? I know they're. Bringing, it has to be. If I Bo Nix is going to take step forwards, then their offensive line must take. Step I know forward. they're. I know they're bringing back a lot of starters, but the starters weren't great. So it's kind of one of those things where you get experience, but you yeah. weren't good, kind of thing. Absolutely. You know, how do you weigh that? Uh, will T.J. Finley get any playing time? Will Bo Nix be bad enough where T.J. Finley steps in? I'll. I'll let you answer all five of these. <laughs> What it, what it was what's Harson's debut look like? What's the offense look like mainly under Brian Harson? Yeah. How's the defense changed a little bit? But really, we're we're looking at we've seen Gus Mel's on for so long. We're looking at how's that offense changed a little bit, and does Auburn potentially have the best running back in football in Tank Bigsby? Those are my five questions. So you I'll, answer them how you want to. So I'll answer. I'll answer them in order. I'll try to remember okay. how to do this question. I'll try to remember how and okay. try to answer them that way. So Bo so, Nix. First so Bo Nix uh-huh. Look, you definitely have to see some improvement from it, and, and you can combine the first two questions together pretty much because Bo will go as well as the offensive line goes because I think that was one of the big frustrations from last year with Bo was he was running for his life last year. I mean, there, there was just no protection up front for Bo Nix, and he was having to force balls downfield. He was getting tracked in the backfield before he could even think. Uh, look, is is this Bo's team? I I don't know. I mean, I know I I saw a story on Twitter. I don't know how reliable the source was <laughs> that T.J. Finley actually is is torn in the locker room as the the locker room favorite to to be the quarterback. I, I think a lot of guys are rallying around Finley to be the quarterback because I think a lot of people think that Bo Nix kind of just got the job because of his dad last year at least with with, with Gus Malzahn and whatnot. I I don't know. Look, Brian Harson has no loyalty towards that side as far as what happened last season. And this offense is going to look really different from what we've seen with Gus Malzahn. We've seen a lot of – I mean, I've seen people – I've heard people call it a high school offense and this, you know, this gimmicky spread offense that Gus runs, which, you know, I mean, it worked for a couple of years there. It would be pretty great just to see them go I don't to- know enough about Brian O'Harson's offense to really yeah. say that I'm going to see what – we saw from Miles. I mean, everybody runs a pretty much a spread technique at this point. There's just different variations it would, it would of it. Be, it would be awesome to see them. I know they they probably won't, but it would be really cool for Auburn fans anyways to see them go back to an RPO uh, system that they were running back in 2013 with Nick Marshall kind of thing. Right. Just just give give Bo Nick some outs here. Give him. It. He's such an athlete. I watched him in high school a lot. I watched oh, a lot yeah, of it. Oh yeah, I played a lot in high and school. He has and that he athletic was, ability for sure. Oh my gosh, he was so good in high school. So it's almost like. Give him some time. Don't make him freak out. Make the passes. Make those so like make those Patrick Mahomes ass passes. Like hey, he's not Patrick Mahomes, so don't make him try to no, do that. No. Let him stay in the pocket. Get some passes off that way. Let him run some some read options in there. Let him get his you know get hit a couple times. Get his feet set. You know, kind of thing, and let's see where it goes from there. That's what I would look for. If to, I was an Auburn fan, yeah, I would want to see that from Brian Harson. Now, to answer one of your questions, you said that you thought Tank Bigsby might be the best running back in college football. Yes, there are some people who might say, I don't even know if Tank Bigsby is the best running back in this state. So let's not let's not jump to the, look. Tank Bigsby's good. 
And and but Bajan Robinson, obviously good from Texas. Yeah. But I mean, Brees Hall, I will say. I think everybody because he doesn't get the amount of carries that some of these other ones get. I think a lot of people forget about how good Brian Robinson really is. So I, I, I don't know. Like maybe, maybe we'll see a big coming out party for him on Saturday. Maybe maybe Tank Bixby will be really good. So I, we, I don't know. We just talked about how how bad that O line is. Tank Bixby had over a thousand yards rushing. He is the uh, yeah. he's legit. When you watch him play, it's one of those where you know you see yeah. some running backs that you're like kind of like almost like you know Derrick Henry's all time great, right? All time great. But when you watch him at high Alabama, you almost thought to yourself. Obviously, you know now that he's just really good. You almost thought to yourself, what would he look like behind a not so good offensive line, right? Yeah. I take Bigsby he's not behind a good offensive line, and you see him run that ball the way he makes the cuts, his vision. You know, he is he's got the speed and the power kind of combined right. in there. He's a scary guy to tackle, man. You just you don't want to see him in the open field, and you don't want to see him in between the lines either. I agree. Uh, that's why I have him up there. I, I don't know if he is the best. You have Bajon Robinson. You have Brees Hall from Iowa State. I'm sure I'm missing another really good guy out there. Tank Bigsby's at least in my top five. Now, there could be another guy in the SEC that I'm forgetting about as well, but he's just he's so dynamic. He's a great pass catcher. He's just, he's just that... He's that running back that you want on a team that can make a difference. You know what I'm saying? He's not a running back that you just you know, kind of up the middle, up the I'm middle, up you. the middle. I'm with you. That's, that's I, why and I have that And he's going to have his chance to prove it. Now, Derek Mason takes over the defense for Auburn in his first year, and so that's going to be something interesting to watch for yeah. see how they look. How many wins and how, how does this team have to look at the end of the year? Because it's a tough schedule for Auburn. This is a very – I think it's one of the toughest schedules in the college football. It is. They're usually ranked in the top, it's, though. It's, they, they normally have a pretty tough schedule. I'm not yeah. sure why. I think it's because they have to play Georgia and Alabama every they year. They I'm do. pretty sure it's, that's why they're in the their Western, schedule is so bad. I was going to say, they're in the Western um, SEC, and then they play Georgia. Yeah, right? and, and then not to mention they have to travel to Penn State this year. Uh, so – how many wins does Brian Harson have to win for this to be look successful in Auburn fans' eyes? For them to be satisfied with his first year, how many wins realistically does Brian Harson win? Because I have them right at about seven or eight wins. Seven yeah, eight. I think I think I think seven and five is probably really realistic. I think eight wins is when you win one of those games. Maybe you shouldn't right. because think about it: Penn State. Georgia, Alabama, Texas A&M, LSU. I mean, you can make a case for five losses right there. Right. So I think so. You have to win one of those games that you necessarily aren't. And LSU and Penn State are both on the road. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. A&M's you, on the road. I mean, you've I only got if, Alabama and Georgia at home. So I think if you're Brian Harson or if you're an Auburn fan, and you get eight wins, you should be happy. That oh, yeah. that, seven or eight wins, sounds, you should be happy. That right? sounds like another. You Gus, get to a bowl game. You just fired the guy that was getting you seven, eight wins. So that sounds like another Gus Malzahn, you know, type year. Which is, if you're an Auburn fan, is gross. Right. But if you're if right. you're a first year under a new head coach, you still have kind of most of the same players that Gus Malzahn has, obviously, and you get to eight wins with this really tough schedule. You got to be happy with that. I think so, so I think too. eight wins is a. It's a realistic. I think seven wins you're you're eh, you're okay with, but you didn't win. Their didn't, ceiling's got to be eight or nine wins though. There, there's no way. I mean, you, you guys don't think they can win more than eight games? No, right? so I, I don't see them. Let's go over. Let's eight. go over for sure wins for me, anyways, for Auburn, Akron, of course, Al- Alabama State, Georgia course. State. Those are your cupcakes, right? Right. You you do you have to travel. Arkansas. I mean, you could say that you're at Arkansas. Dub, sure. I think I, I mean, think you win that game. Ole you Miss have, you have toss Ole up Miss at home. That's a toss up. You're at South Carolina. That's got to be a win. Oh, that's uh, you got to win that one. Mississippi, Mississippi State? State at home. Uh, I, I like that uh, Mississippi State. So that's six, right? So that's six yeah. games. So now you got that's a bunch not, of games that are kind of like a coin flip. So game. Ole Miss is a coin flip, right? Yeah, I think if they if yeah, they're as good as tough game. If they're as good as all these you know people are saying they're gonna be this year and everything like that, I think that's a toss up. And that obviously changes a lot. LSU and Penn State, right? LSU yeah. changes can change, obviously, after. We can see what they're looking like a little bit with this UCLA game coming up. That, that might can, be the game that determines whether or not you get to eight or you stay I think at seven Penn games. State, that Penn State game, yeah, not necessarily yeah. how, not necessarily if they win or not, but just how they perform in that will really tell right. you how the season's going to go. I, I think you, you. you get that Penn State yeah. game, you just see what you're about, you get there. You start if you start season Let's four and oh, if Auburn can start the season four and oh, they're in good shape. If Auburn can good if shape Auburn to win can eight win or nine three, games. If Auburn can beat Penn State, with the, which if they do, they're gonna win they're gonna four and oh, like you said. But if they can just beat Penn State, you're an as an Auburn fan, you are very You're looking good. 
You you're know, looking good a, if you're Auburn. It's a very sure. make or break for both teams, I think. Tyler, you in agreement? You think eight? You think eight? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think eight's the ceiling. Okay, so they're looking good. If they can I think eight, we're on agreement. I, I, I would bet if, if you gave me a line that said seven and a half, though, I would definitely take the under. I'd take. I would seven. too. I'd so, take too, seven. honestly. So that's going to be seven. our week zero uh, recap and our week one preview. We're running a little long, so we'll we'll wait for NFL for next week. Just kind absolutely. of our preview of that. We'll go over the big stories, yeah. of course. Mac Jones starting and everything like that. We'll touch on next week. We'll kind of. I want to touch on fantasy football a little bit. I haven't really talked to you guys about that, but I'm a fantasy guy, so we'll touch on that a little bit. Absolutely. And also give our Super Bowl I've got a draft picks. on Monday, so that's, that'll be too. perfect timing. So we'll too. be, we'll be so set we'll, for Wednesday. I was say, we'll Wednesday. be ready. So we've got NFL coming up next week. So just to finish out the show, we're going to do uh, – I guess we can – did you do most of your doghouse or do you have another team in your doghouse? Oh, no. Well, I, I, I have I, – they were originally my doghouse, but I, after the news this week, there is definitely somebody else that I have okay, in my doghouse. So we're going to do our last three segments kind of personalized for each other. Uh, mine's going to be really short. Tal, you want to go first? You want me to go first? You know, let Cole finish it out. So mine's really short. I kind of gave most of my stats as we were going through. I wanted to look up kind of how bad has Nebraska been. I have another NFL stat that we're not going to get to. And then I wanted to touch on Texas starting a true freshman, which isn't very normal to happen. My stat of the week or stat of the day, however you want to say it, really simple one actually. Week one of college football, it's here, right? We finally got here. Absolutely. There are five AP ranked matchups. Five. That's the most in a week one since a preseason AP poll began in 1950. Wow. We're looking for a great week one, boys. That's just it's just a hype up the boys kind of stat. Hype you know, up kind of the boys. Hype, type up, of stat. hype up the boys. Hype up you know <laughs> the the season coming here. It's not a, not a crazy stat or anything like that. But five AP matchups for a week one is just great to watch all day yeah, Saturday. That's... So sit on your couch all day Saturday. Take a take a beat and, and watch the football. I and that's Steven's it. stat of the week slash day. Day week. <laughs> there we go. Day week. All right, what you got for Tyler's takes? So, I got uh, I got Tyler's bets. Tyler's bets? Okay. Yeah, well, we're going to change this to Tyler's uh, bets. Well, takes. You know, I like, like Tyler's bets. I like alliteration. The betting, the betting picks. Okay. I love go it. Ahead. All right, well, Tyler, I've got Tyler two bets. for you this week, starting okay. with Army and Georgia State Uh-oh. at Saturday, 11 a.m. Central Time. Okay. Army, early line, plus 105 right Ooh. now as we stand. They're a two-point underdog going into the game, and as we know, Army's triple option team. They've won eight or more games four out of the last five season under uh, Jeff Munkin, who's the head coach. Right oh, yeah. Now. Okay. Uh, also, they averaged 4.4 yards a carry, 264 yards a game, finishing in the top five in the country in both those categories. Do you want to take over stats? I mean, <laughs> and if that's He's not enough, reeling them if, out right if, now. If that's not enough to sell you, last year Georgia State gave up three point nine yards a carry, and uh, this year's Panthers team they only return they return mer- most of their defensive line, but also have a brand new linebacking core. So they're returning nobody in that group actually, yeah. nobody in that group. So and we all know the triple option, you're vulnerable with a bad linebacking group. It's very true. And also, college football analyst Phil Still rated Georgia State's defensive line position group highly during this offseason, but he rated the uh, linebacking core the worst in the Sun Belt Conference. The worst. Okay. Wow. And so, with that being said, I think Army squeaks this one out. Uh, probably 27 24 is what I think in this okay. one. So, and then, Take a money line then, right? Correct. Okay. Money line in this one. And then next game, we transition to the Pac-12 late-night game. Oh, night. the late-night Pac-12 okay. game. So you, you win a game love early, and then, you, and then you hold on to your money, and you win a game yeah. early. Yeah, I exactly. It. I like it. So you're tuned in all day to the games in between that. Yep. Anyways, uh, Washington State, they host Utah State. Oh, that's such a Pac-12 after <laughs> dark game. 10, <laughs> 10 p.m. Central time. Oh, my gosh. Central. Who's staying up to watch that? Oh, oh gosh. Yeah, I know. Anyway, Tyler, 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 I'm going to text you at like 1 a.m. and see if you're still up watching yeah, so, uh, yeah. this Washington game. Anyways, uh, <laughs> Washington State, they're favored by 16 and a half right now. Okay. Uh, but uh, the Cougars played only four games last year. They finished one and three under first-year oh, no. head coach Nick Rolovich. Is Tyler taking the, the Aggies of Utah Which, State? <laughs> Aggies finished with a one and five record last oh, year, but gosh. hired a new coach in Blake gross. Anderson. Do you know where Blake oh, Anderson's gross. from, guys? I do not. Arkansas you, State. If you would have asked oh, me man. before you, he just said it, what Utah State's mascot was, I couldn't have told you. <laughs> And that's that's bad. But the only way I know that is because yeah. I, mean, when I used to play the NCAA college football game. I actually played for Utah State Ooh. when I was a, I think I was a running back, and I won the Heisman actually. So nice. way to go! Proud of you. Proud well, of anyways, you. Anderson's coming to the Aggies uh, from Arkansas State. Uh, Gross. Where? Gross. <laughs> 
they had an explosive <laughs> offense. I don't know if y'all got to watch them last okay, year. Okay, maybe Arkansas not State. Gross. Oh wait, was that the was that the team that played like? Six games, like when nobody else they they like made up their schedule on the uh, weren't they the first game last year? They were. Yeah. Were okay. Okay. I did. Year. I did watch Very that. Okay. Game. They weren't gross. So Take that back. Yeah. yeah they, have, <laughs> they really do have a good offensive system if you watch them. Anyways, Utah State brings in fourteen new transfers, guys. Sheesh. And also including one of those transfers, uh, Arkansas State quarterback from last year, Logan Bonner, okay. coming over. So. Uh, they also returned 19 starters Ooh. on both sides of the ball. Holy we cow. Had those. UAB was, not, was UAB 19 starters? Yeah, they were 19 Who's starters. You, yeah. What team did you mention earlier? Well, yeah, it was another one. Oh, one no, it's Miami, not, not, Miami. not UAB. But I thought, Miami, I thought UAB, I thought UAB, UAB, UAB I think, too. returned uh, was it 17. 17. Yeah. But yeah, no, Miami returns 19. You thought Utah State, 19 Miami and starters. Utah State, okay. So it's a veteran team. It's a so, veteran team. Yeah. Watch out to keep them close in this. If not win, they're at plus six oh five money line. Ooh. I think this could be. I think you. What's you the What's the line? At, it's sixteen and a half. Sixteen and a half. Utah State. State? Close in sixteen and a half. Plus think, six oh five right? yeah. though is. So. If that's they just win, two there's, scores. There's potential for the money line to climb. That's just two plus, scores. Plus six oh five though, and they win straight up. That's a That's a good bet. I like yeah, that bet. I like that too. But Honestly, but to be on the safe side, I think you bet. The spread. You bet the spread. Okay, the spread. safer spread, but. I might bet the six oh five. That sounds juicy. So Tyler's so Tyler's that. bets this week. He's taking Utah State Utah plus State the points. Uh huh. Okay. And Army money. And line. Army money. Army money line. Line. So if you're like betting, it. guys, get out there and take the bets. And I, now we're gonna do a little segment responsibly. Yeah. Responsibly. yeah. <laughs> Gamble responsibly, please. <laughs> but we're gonna call the dogs here a little bit. Call okay. them up a little bit because I got a guy in the doghouse and I got one team in the doghouse. So first off, I'm gonna start off with my underdog that you need to keep it. I'm not gonna say they're gonna win the game, but I'm gonna put Florida State in the doghouse. They're playing Notre Dame. They're hosting Notre Dame this week, and the line is plus seven and a half for Florida State, or I mean for Notre Dame, obviously their favorites, whatnot. And I think Florida State's gonna keep this game close. I don't know what's got me feeling good about the Seminoles this year, but I think Mike Norvell is gonna have this team ready to play Week One, and I like Florida State to be, keep it close, 31-24. I think. Notre Dame's going to win the game, but I think Florida State keeps it close. So put them on your upset alert. Notre Dame, that team that kind of teeters around college football, you know, hey, we, we consider them contenders every year. We'll see what happens week one. And then, of course, the, the guy I'm putting in the doghouse, of course, is Cam Newton. He's got to be the guy everybody puts in the doghouse. Lost his job to the rookie, gets released, going. So I, who knows what's going to happen with Cam Newton. But he, he lost it. And, of course, the reason why I put him in the doghouse is because it's so relevant to the state. Because a two Auburn quarterbacks, you can't make this up, Jared Stidham and Cam Newton both got beat out by an Alabama quarterback. You can't make this up. That is just, that's hilarious, man. So you've got to put Cam Newton in the doghouse this week. So I've got Florida State keeping it close against Notre Dame. And then, of course, the, the big story this week is Cam Newton getting cut by the Patriots and then, of course, replaced by Mac, my Mac Daddy. Mac <laughs> Daddy has arrived for next week. We'll get, we'll get into that, of course, next week. As they have Mac and Tua playing in week so one. So we got so to recap, Cole, you've got FSU as your dog. They're the dog. And then Cam is in your dog. He's house. in the dog house. The dog I'm watching, Florida State. The guy that's in the dog house though is Cam Newton. He's I love in the dog it. House. Until he finds a new home. But right now he's in the dog house. I love it. I love it, guys. Well, that was an awesome show. Awesome show oh, back. Yeah. Great Went way. a little long, but it's okay. It's okay. We get hyped. It's week one. We get yeah. hyped. It's week one. We're in week one. We had a lot to talk about. We're actually, there we're, actually was a we're in week zero, okay? <laughs> we're, a as a talk. podcast, we're in week zero. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's build it up a little bit, and then next week we'll come back stronger. You know, I mean, you exactly. go two years without talking. You're all up. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we had a lot of stuff built up to talk about. Well, you have sure. COVID-19 for two years in a row. You just yeah. you get everything back. You get all your senses back, and you just don't know what to we do. We were quarantined for two years from, from uh, having the show. <laughs> well, so, guys, I think that was a great first week we like like i said next week we will come in with some nfl talk we will also have the week one recap of course with a huge week one and then we will go into our re- week two preview yep anything else absolutely tyler cole hey, follow just, us on all just social may, media I was about to say, just make sure you yep. follow us on all our social medias and keep up and get the do those notifications make sure you get notified whenever the podcast is released yes listen Especially, to us when you're traveling from work or hey if you're at home working from home like i am listen to us while you're at home perfect Perfect. So. Under review 24-7 on all social media and YouTube and um, possibly Twitch. Who knows? So, for all that, we're signing off. We'll see you next week.